Good morning, everyone. I'm Cynthia Tolls, president of the Gaston City Council, and we're conducting business today, work session via teleconference. This meeting is being broadcast on Facebook Live and will be available on channel 99, AT&T Uverse, and the city's uh, YouTube channel. Just want to remind everyone that the session that we're doing this morning gives the council an opportunity to review items on today's agenda, as well as any ordinances and resolutions that have been routed for the council's consideration. This meeting is informal and there's no official action that will be taken. At 11 o'clock, we'll have an update from our EMA director and the fire chief. So if you'll just look at your uh, today's agenda for today's meeting, we have three items on here that uh, for unfinished business, item 9A and 9B, no action. Uh, action is required regarding 1427 Avenue and District 2 because the grass cutting cost has been paid by the owners. We have uh, item C is the resolution assessing a grass lien against property located at 921 Tuscaloosa Avenue in District 3 that was tabled for one year on September the 29th to allow owners an opportunity to make payments. The, only, the owner made one $20 payment. So we have a substitute resolution with the reduced amount and a recommendation. Your audio is fading out. Okay. Ms. Nelson said my audio was fading out. It's okay, it's better now, but it was it was pretty bad there for a second. Okay, I, my tech savvy, I haven't done anything, uh, but let me know. Okay, uh, I'll go back to- um, Dr. Tolls, if we can make it through pre-council, um, we'll make sure that your, your network connection is good for the regular meeting. Okay, all right. Uh, <clears throat> I'll go back to item C, where this is a resolution assessing grass lean cutting uh, against property located at 921 Tuscaloosa Avenue in District 3. And it was tabled for one year on September the 29th, 2020, to allow the owner to uh, have an opportunity to make payments. And the owner only made one $20 payment. So we have a substitute resolution to reduce the amount and recommend to proceed the clock meeting and I, I'll ask for a motion to substitute during that time. Uh, item 10 through 14 are public hearings regarding resolution order and abatement of nuisance on property. Uh, item 10, no action is required regarding property located at 221 Mary Drive in District 1 because the nuisance has been abated by the owner. Item number 11. Toast, yes. Can I ask a question? For, can I ask a question to Mr. Harbison before we get in, go any further? On number 14, the public hearing at 2318 Norris Avenue. Can you tell me what that's about, Mr. Harbison? Yes, that was a that was a burned house and it has since been removed by the owner. So we have closed our case. Now there are, are still some issues on that property, but as far as the nuisance case on the burn house has been abated. Okay, the owner did that itself, correct? Didn't that is correct. Out? That is correct. The owner has the owner has passed away the last few weeks. He's passed away on that, so I want to make sure we're we're all on the same page on that one. Yeah, I think his daughter called me, and uh, you know we we had an opportunity to to talk, and I let her know that uh, she would not. Uh, be needed at the hearing today. We just went ahead and closed that file. Okay, we're just going to remove it from the agenda. Okay. Yeah. We'll go back to 
Okay, we'll go back to uh, item number 11. That was item 14. And we'll go back to item 11. Is the recommendation from the building department is to adopt the resolution. Item number 7, 12. No action is uh, required regarding property at 942 Chestnut Street in District 5 because the nuisance has been abated by the owner. And item 13 is regarding property located at 1028 Fairview Avenue in District 6. The recommendation from the building department is to adopt the resolution. Uh, item 15 is a public hearing and a resolution approving issuance of an alcoholic beverage license. Uh, Latanya Rutledge doing business at 711 located at 823 Tuscaloosa Avenue has applied for a retail beer and table wine license off premises on it on only uh, in parentheses. Uh, it says that the police chief has recommend, recommended denial. Uh, we have item 16 and 17 is a resolution appointing Kyle Chamber to the, to the Fire Cemetery Board and Fire Cemetery Foundation. Item 18 is a resolution authorizing services currently used by the police department that allows for an ADA compliance. And item number 19 is a resolution renaming the library park at the Gaston Public Library. Uh, are there any questions or comments from council members concerning today's agenda? Yeah, I'd like to have uh, Councilman Worthy's uh, opinion on the uh, bar. I believe that's uh, District three. number 15. Just ask Councilman Worthy. I just wondered where he stood on it. On oh, I'm for approving it. Uh, I didn't uh, know that the chief had uh, put down to the night. Did he give a reason, doctor? Uh, no, that was just in parentheses, but I'm sure it's in, uh, it's in the paperwork. Okay. Is he not on where he could explain? I don't believe he is, Tom. Okay. Um, is, this, is this one of those where he just kind of has a, where he just has a, 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 just a general objection to the process? Because he, he typically objects to them regardless. I had forgotten that. Yeah, but some he approves with no problem. So I was just wondering if it was something I missed. I'm, I'm trying to look at the. Uh... Yeah, that's what I'm trying to find the paperwork myself on it. There are a few on there. They are. There's one has to do with an incident uh, in a school setting. Hmm. According to the paperwork, there's no criminal, uh, there's no criminal uh, activity. Okay, well, we'll just move on from that. Okay. That, uh, yeah, well, there's an there's an there's an incident uh, report that in, that involves uh, uh, you know maybe you should read the narrative. Okay, uh, I would like um, is um, is the attorney on? 
or either I asked the council, have we, have we, I'll use the word upgraded, have we did any amendments to our NAWS ordinance? To our what? NAWS ordinance. Oh. That's what I guess that would be on the nuisance on the NAWS ordinance. I'm getting a, uh, I'm getting a call, not in my district. I think it's in Councilman so uh, Wilson district on Fourth Avenue where there's a lot of uh, uh, noise and now uh, there's a complaint. I think, well, you know, the children are bringing home their instruments and they're playing. There's a band that's playing, but I, I don't know what time of day or night they're playing or practicing. But uh, I was just trying to find, I know we had talked about it or it had been talked about uh, the noise ordinance. So I just wondered, did we do any type of amendments to it? All we did was enforce what we had. The ordinance says nine o'clock at night or 10 o'clock with a permit, but we're not issuing any permits. So nine o'clock is the time on it. Any further we come from Captain Jackson. Okay. He's the one that's implementing it. Just wanted to know so I could tell the, uh, the person that's, sure. you know, that's uh, calling. So if there's Double not- Double with him. All right, I will do that. Uh, if there's nothing else, then we'll move to our uh, pre-council folder for today. We'll look at items that have been routed to the mayor and forward to the council. Uh, the first uh, item is an ordinance amending the fiscal 2020 action plan and budget for HUD. CDBG and amending the fiscal 2022 general fund budget to reallocate prior year's CDBG funds to the 2020 CDBG street improvement. And I'll call on Ms. Renee Baker, the community development planner at this time. October 19th, can be adopted in anyone. Is Miss Baker available? It looks like she's on the line, Dr. Tolles, but she's still showing us muted. It says on my paperwork, it cannot okay, be adopted. Okay, can, you, can you hear me now? Yes, we're not talking about okay. adoption. No. Can, it, can everyone we're, hear we're me not, now? Uh -huh. Yes, uh-huh. Okay. She, she just needs right. to speak on it, but we're not talking about adopting. Go ahead. No, we're not, not today. Ms. Ba go ahead, yeah, Ms. This, Baker. Thank you, Dr. Tulls. This was actually discussed in community development committee meeting last week. Um, what we're proposing to do is move uh, 600, a total of $600,000 from prior year funds uh, this is coming from 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019. These are funds that were unexpended during those program years, and we want to move that over to the 2020 street improvement that the uh, engineering department uh, has proposed to pave streets in low, moderate income areas, and that's what this money is used for. This will be on top of what we originally budgeted of $500,000 for street improvements in those areas, which will give a total budget of 1100000 for street CDBG street improvements. Are there any questions? And if you'll just stay on the line because the, not, the next item is a resolution authorizing uh, agreement with the physical 2020 uh, CDBG Coronavirus Aid Relief and Care Act uh, subscript sub recipients. Yes, ma yes ma'am. Okay, uh, if you'll you go ahead. Me? Okay. Um, this is a resolution which will authorize the mayor to execute agreements with uh, the following agencies. This is a round of money, CARES Act money, that we received directly from CDB, from HUD for CDBG uh, that has to be used to prevent, prepare for, or respond to COVID. 
and the agencies that were previously approved by the council were MANA, they overseas $30,000, Way of the Cross Ministries, $30,000, the Love Center Homeless Shelter, $30,000, St. Martin de Porres Catholic Center of Concern, $30,000, the Salvation Army, $30,000, and United Way of Etowah County will receive $51,249 to actually use, they will do that as a clearinghouse and will accept applications from other nonprofits to uh, apply for these funding and will oversee those. And again, this was already approved um, by the council. Uh, when we did that originally, I believe what I did was fail to actually allow the mayor to execute those agreements. So we do have this funding in place and are ready to start expending these funds if the council will approve this this authorization to allow the mayor to execute agreements. Now when does then, when do you, this this no, approval is not for today though, is it? This particular it can one. Wait. Okay. It can All wait. Right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. If you want it to wait, All that's right. fine. Um, this actually can go back and they will be able to go back to March the seventh of this year to expend funds. Okay, because this has already this has already been on our agenda, hasn't it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's I thought so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are there any questions to Ms. Baker? Our next uh, item is a resolution authorizing a memorandum of understanding with Central Alabama Crime Stoppers. Is there someone on the line or from the police department or does the uh, legal department have any information concerning the Crime Stoppers uh, memorandum? Dr. Tolls, I did just get a text um from someone and we're trying to get them in in case there are questions on Crime Stoppers. So if you would like to uh, go on to another order of business, I'll get make sure they get in the meeting and then we can uh, have them address that. Okay, all right, thank you. <clears throat> Our next uh, uh, item is a resolution authorizing participation in the Senior Nutrition Program and, and the grant. And I'll call on Ms. Jean, Jean Wellington, Parks and Recreation Director, for discussion. Ms. Wellington, if you're available. Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Um, I was just going to click on starting this. This is uh, the senior nutrition um, grant that we have had for multiple years. This is in partnership with East Alabama. Uh, Regional Planning and Development Commission. Uh, this is, like I said, just a, um, the yearly uh, re-signing of paperwork with, uh, so that we can accept this grant to feed this in your nutrition. It's not a deadline on it as far as when you need it, is it? Uh, we can wait to next week. Okay, okay. But this is, this is what we've, uh, this is a grant we've always gotten in the concern of the nutrition program. Yes, ma'am, it sure is. Oh, okay then. All right, thank you. Any questions from uh, for Ms. Wellington? I have, <clears throat> excuse me, I have one. Yes, sir. Uh, Jen, is this a, can you tell a little more detail about where the food is distributed or is this like at Elliott or how is this, uh, how's the food done? Uh, this is for the community centers, the nutrition program out of the community centers at Elliott and Carver. Uh, this is for our congregate congregate meals right now we are doing drive through instead of having them eat inside due to the pandemic and then we also deliver uh, meals from both of this, these centers. Thank you. Good work. Yeah, are there any other questions? All right, thank you Ms. Wellington. Thank you. Uh, we'll move to the next item. Dr. We'll Tolls. We'll move to the next uh, item where yes. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. We, if we can fine. go back to Crime Stoppers, uh, it looks like Nick um, is in with the, the mayor and he can speak about that. All right. If you'll go ahead, please. All right. The uh, Crime Stoppers is part of the American Rescue Act fund being that was in place for neighborhood crime. We have, uh, have a memorandum of understanding before you for Crime Stoppers. It's a uh, 
it'll be for $10,000 a year uh, for the next three years. And this is something we had in place for the uh, neighborhood crime and it's already, uh, it's been explained out to us and the police department is 100% on board. And so uh, we just think it'll be excellent to, uh, for individuals to call in for potential rewards for tips for solving crimes here in, in Gadsden. Okay. Is there a number that's already available for, for them or will that be something that will come in the future? A number? Meaning, for Crime Stoppers. Yeah, there'll be, there's a phone number. And then th what they do is uh, people will call in Crime Stoppers and then Crime Stoppers will relay the information either by email or text not only to our police department, but it also goes to the surrounding uh, police jurisdictions that are uh, involved with Crime Stoppers as well. And that will help if there is a, a, a murder or something like that, or, or robbery, it would go out to surrounding jurisdictions to be on the lookout for them as, uh, also. Well, what I, I was asking, there is a number that is already in place. Is there a yeah. telephone number already in place for clients? There will be. It's an 800 number or, or something okay. like that. I'm not sure of the number, but it, it, it will be in place. All right. Okay. Thank you. Any, quest any questions from the other council members? All right, we'll look at the number five item. It says this a resolution authorizing agreement to purchase property to facilitate proposed improvements at the intersection of George Wallace Drive and East Chestnut. Uh, I'll call on uh, Mr. Heath Williamson, the city engineer to explain. Yes, ma'am, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay, so this is the project that we've had in the works for quite some time. Uh, this is the intersection improvement at East Chestnut Street and George Wallace Boulevard. Uh, it will change the traffic signals at that location. Uh, it, it requires us to put new traffic poles up, which will require some additional right of way. Uh, well, I say is it requires new traffic poles, but also we wanted to repair the. There I am. We wanted to repair the um, sidewalk or the ADA access on. Uh, well, all through the project, but uh, this right away is actually on the east side of the project. And so to do that, to tie everything in correctly, requires us to get this one track. Any questions from the council members? When will this project possibly start? The word uh, on so, so as far as the project starting, uh, once we acquire this right away, once council approves to go ahead and purchase the property, we'll close on the property. In that process, I'll submit this uh, project to the Department of Transportation for the permit required to do it. Um, so pending that, we'll put it out for bids immediately. Uh, so timeline, rough ballpark, I would say early um, FY22, well, we're in FY22, but early next year, physical 2022, probably by the time we get some of the materials uh, in place, obviously concrete's readily available and some of the normal materials we have, but the, um, the, the traffic signal portion of the materials have a bit of a lag time, so I would expect about spring, you'll actually see that portion of the work completed, but we'll go ahead and get the bids out as soon as we get the permit. Any other questions from the I was, I was curious, members? Uh, Madam President, I was curious Go ahead. to ask Heath if uh, I'm looking at the map. Is is this corner, is, is that there at the, at the uh, pharmacy there? What's the, so what's the this? So we've got two intersections actually in uh, design right now. This one is the intersection that splits is East Chestnut between Ronnie Watkins Ford and the venue at Coosa Landing. Uh, because of the volume issues that we've had uh, on big nights where we have a lot of folks coming in and out of that one intersection. Uh, and then we also, 
not in, in conjunction with this right of way track, but I'll have another one coming to you soon that is the main intersection improvement at uh, Megan Boulevard and Hood Avenue right there at where we say Walgreens. And so we are currently in negotiations with that property owner um, and should have that to you hopefully within a couple of weeks. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yes. Okay, and our next item and last item is a resolution authorizing agreement with the Gaston City Board of Education. Uh, this appropriates $182,962 for the after school tutoring program for those children not covered by CARES funding and for the My my on reading program. And at this time, Ms. Rosser uh, has uh, comments or statements concerning this. Yes, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, so as you are aware, in our fiscal year 2022 budget, uh, we took out the 900,000 funding for the Board of Education. I had been told that um, everything that was used um, by that $900,000 that was going to the Board of Ed had been approved or put into their fiscal year 2022 budget. Um, and as you know, Dr. Menez, uh came and spoke with the council a couple of weeks ago, and so I began to ask some questions. Um, and come to find out, first of all, on the after-school tutoring program, um, the ARP funds that they received only covers 10% of the lower um, income of the children. Um, and so therefore, there's quite a number of children that um, cannot participate in this program this year because the funding was not put in their budget for it. Um, and so the shortage there is $114,000. So um, I am requesting that we fund that part of the program so that all the children that need to be in the after school tutoring program can participate. The other portion is the MON program. Um, the mine program um, was actually uh, kind of a misunderstanding on Corey's uh, Shelton's part at the Board of Education. She thought that the mine program had been funded for fiscal year 21 and 22 based of what, off of what she had been told. So she did not budget for it this year and come to find out uh, what they paid last year was only for one year. So the program was not funded in this fiscal year. So uh, she has invoice in hand and it is $68,962. So there again, we are asking to fund uh, that program. We feel like both of these programs are very needed uh, programs for our children in the uh, school system. And um, so we're asking for approval of this um, resolution. I know how y'all feel about asking for approval today, uh, but I would ask for approval on this today if possible uh, for a number of reasons. Um, number one, we still make a payment, a monthly payment to the Board of Education and it's ad valorem taxes. Okay, that's, that's something that automatically goes to them. And so um, it will be much easier on us, actually, it's not Board of Ed, but on our books, that we also go ahead and fund. This will be divided into 12 payments. It'll be an outside agency funding and it will be divided into 12 equal monthly payments. And I would like to be able to make that payment to them this week if possible. I'm just asking. Thank you very much. Hey, um, just to clarify, obviously I'm the one that's probably spoken out more about uh, the procedure, of, but I think that this is a fantastic example of when we would look to suspend the rules and consider something immediately. I mean, things that have a deadline or things that are gonna have a direct impact on our schools or our children. You know, in the past, some of the things I've objected to us considering them early wouldn't have impacted the flow of money. Uh, this is an instance where it does impact the flow of money that can potentially impact the citizens. So I have no objections to considering this. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wilson. And I would like to say um, I, I do feel in some ways kind of responsible because um, there again, um, I went off of based off of what I was told. 
Um, and so I feel like, you know, we would I would have never cut this out had I knowingly known this when the budget was taking place. So I hope that y'all do not feel like I have misled you in any way, because I assure you that was not the intent whatsoever. So I feel like we are doing the right thing here. Um, and there again, um, the mine program, we'd like to get that started. Um, and there again, there is no funding for the mine program. Corey has not paid this invoice, uh, hoping that we give them the funding. And as soon as they get this funding in place, um, you know, they will proceed. Madam, Madam President, if I, if I may, um, I'd, I'd like to just um, extend a, a note of appreciation to both the finance department and the mayor's office for, uh, for, for, for hearing uh, and being open to discussions uh, outside of our budget process to, uh, to consider this. Um, obviously, there are a lot of emotional opinions about uh, about funding for, for specific agencies and obviously the, 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 the uh, Board of Education is, is, is one of those that, that fits that. So this is a, an example, uh, again, of uh, us being able to have conversations uh, that can result in the right thing being done, even, even when, it's, uh, when it's outside of uh, the timing of some of our other processes. So again, thank you to the uh, Finance Department and thank you to the Mayor's Office. For, uh, for responding to this need. Any other comments? Is there objection to bringing it up today? Yes, ma'am, I'm gonna to object to bring this up today. I like to look it over. This is the first time I've seen it. One more week's not gonna hurt anything on this. You know, I said back a couple weeks ago that I wasn't going to let anything up until I was sure what it was and what all about it, and I just got this today, and I think it's, you know, I need to be able to look over all this and know exactly where we're coming from and everything about this. You know, when I wanted to bring the budget up a couple of weeks ago, I was sincere about that, trying to get everything going, so one more week on this won't matter. All right. Madam President, I just want to make one point about the budget process. Even if we'd approved that budget when Councilman Cannon called for it, the budget would not have gone into effect until October 1st, and it didn't hold up a single penny to anybody by us waiting another week to vote on it. Thank you. That's all I have. I'm just like, well, and, and this, and this right, you know what? Uh, I, I, you know, everybody, and I, I don't try to. I don't try to take credit for 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 nothing that I do because I, I do it because I care. Uh, first of all, Miss Maness came here because I I asked she talked to me and I asked her to come to tell the council and to ask the council uh, for this. I've been in this discussion with uh, Miss Rossa. But we're talking about here again is what I said before. We talk about we care about children. We want the best for children. And all Miss Rosser is saying this this Mayan program is not funded at all. And this is where it's a reading program and it will benefit the children uh, of the books and things. She comes and gives a report. So we know what happens with the Mayan money and the and the tutoring. I, I'm definitely, I definitely approve of this for the tutor, for the tutoring and for the Mayan program from the very, from the very beginning. But uh, you know, it's just something that's needed. And as Ms. Russell said, it's not on the school system. You know, it's, we're just trying to do the bookkeeping that's right. So, you know, it would be nice. It would be nice to be nice to approve it today. So the funds can go flowing. Um, yeah. We'll do Cannon, what the majority of the council says. Yes. Councilman Cannon, you know, I would ask that, that you allow it to come up and, I mean, and then cast the vote. Uh, but, uh, but I think it's important. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm, I just have to look it over. I mean, you know, this is a lot of money to look over. They might need more money than this right here since we took that $900,000 away from them. They might could use more money than this. That's just my opinion. And, I, you know, I've got my own vote and 
you know, and I represent my people, and it's just, you know, they're as good as the people up on Turntine and Harrelson up in that district. And What does that even mean, man. Councilman King? You said that twice. What does that even mean? That what in, At what point ever have I made you believe that I thought the people of District 5 were better than the people of District 6? When, when have you ever made I – I don't understand where this is coming from, man. What are you doing right now? You've said numerous times on here that uh, you represent your people and you represent the people up there, I'm presuming, and you've said that numerous times that you want to look over stuff and see where it was before money was spent for your your people up there. And is that We're not talking the people about you the, I never said my people. I said the citizens of Gadsden deserve an appropriate amount of time to review $78 million in spending. I never once said a word about Turrentine or Harrelson or, or District 6, and I'm getting really sick of you picking on me, and it ain't going to last much longer. You want to fight? Let's fight. Councilman <laughs> Wilson. Mm. Oh, you're bigger than that. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you. about District 6. The words Turrentine and Harrelson have never come out of my mouth in this city council meeting as a as some way of elevating my people over anybody else, my constituents. It's a disingenuous attack, and I'm tired of it. It's been made over and over and over again. And I'm Madam, Pre Madam President, I'll rejoin at 11. Uh, Councilman, we're I will just say, if we wouldn't have been so quick to take the money from the school system, we wouldn't be in this position right now. Well, there's nothing else. Petty we politics. There, there's nothing else. We'll adjourn and we'll be back. Uh, we got about uh, at 11 o'clock. Thank you. Good morning again. And I'm Cynthia Tolls president of the Gaston City Council. And we're meeting today by teleconference. Today's council meeting is being broadcast on Facebook Live and also can be viewed later on Comcast Channel 99, AT&T UVerse and the City of Gaston YouTube. This meeting of the Gaston City Council will now come to order. The chair calls on City Clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilwoman Tolls. Here. Councilman Williams? Here. Councilman Worthy? Here. Councilman Back? Here. Councilman Wilson? Here. Councilman Cannon? Here. And Councilman Reed? Here. We have a quorum present and our meeting is open for business. Please bow for the invocation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have given to us. We thank you for everyone who's here participating in this meeting. We thank you for our city. We thank you for our elected officials, Lord. We pray that you would be uh, with us today as this meeting is conducted, that uh, your will would be done in our lives and in our city. We thank you for our many blessings. Please forgive us of our many failures. These things we ask in your name. Amen. 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 We'd like to begin today's meeting um, with an update from the Emergency Management Agency Director, Ms. Deborah Gaither. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Ms. Gaither, can I take my mask off now and go anywhere I want to? No, ma'am. <laughs> but it's getting much better and uh the numbers are looking good um we have citizens now that are recovering faster some um have got most have gotten um either one of the new treatments that is going out or vaccine so that is excellent news. Speaking of our vaccines, the Vaccinate Gadsden um, incentive, we had 166 people across the city who um, became vaccinated or received their second vaccine this week. Uh, that brings our total up reported to us at 1,703. Some of those may include a second dose, but um, 
just wanted to give you those numbers today. I want to remind everybody that October 15th is the last day um, for vaccinations. There is a new um, list out on social media for the city of Gadsden about what days you can come to City Hall and collect your incentive. The items that you need to bring with you are proof of City of Gadsden residency, your CDC vaccination card, and your City of Gadsden voucher. That'll go to the second floor on the dates that are listed on our social media pages. Um, the times are on those posts also. If you need more information, you can email us at vaccinategadsden at gmail.com. Um, Councilman Williams, in reference to your question last week, I did touch base with Atala, um, and I was wrong in my statement last week. No, we could not do both. Um, thank you. Sometimes in my old age, I get ahead of my thinking and I speak. So <laughs> I apologize for that. I want to make sure that um, everyone was aware that, no, you cannot participate in both as I misspoke last week. Thank you um, for revisiting to, it. Sir? Thank you for revisiting it. I appreciate okay. it. Mm -hmm. Until um, 3 p.m. today, the annual flu clinic is going on at North Glencoe Baptist Church. It's a drive through. You don't have to get out. It took five minutes um, for some of us to go through this morning before work, but it's till 3 p.m. We encourage you to go on now as because if the rain gets really hard and active after a while, it may have to close early. So we encourage everyone that also have COVID vaccines there today and they have vaccinate Gadsden vouchers. So um, you can utilize that drive through to get your COVID vaccine and your annual flu shot at the same time. The numbers that we're looking at right now, we've reached the total deaths in Etowah County at 474. That means there's been at least three deaths in the last two weeks. Um, new cases this week is 119. That's down. That's, that's very good. The positivity rate is 17.1%. That's a, the first time in a very long time we've been below 20%. So that's, that's a really good number. Not out of the woods, but a good number. So we need to keep doing the things that we're doing, uh, continue to encourage people to vaccinate and wash your hands often, use your mask, uh, social distance, all the things that we've been doing so that we can try to um, stop this all together and move on with, with life. Um, we still are at a high transmission rate because of those numbers, so um, we need to keep that in, in mind. And our seven-day average right now, because the numbers have come down, is uh, 17 per day. We have 17 per day of the people being tested in Etowah County being positive. Anyone have any questions today? Okay. Well, Here thank again, you. thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gaither. Thank we you. appreciate uh, everything that you're doing to keep us updated and uh, in the know about what's going on. Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, we'll have an a update from our, our fire chief, Fire Chief Reed. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, we're morning. traveling, doing uh, EMS meetings uh, in response to the uh, crisis. So uh, I'm going to be brief today, but I'll be glad to take any questions anyone has. Uh, we have great news, which will mirror what Ms. Gaither said. In the past week, we have dropped to just seven PUI calls for the week. That's, of course, an average of one per day. Four percent of our responses last week were to PUI patients. That's down 16 percent from what we were experiencing. Oh, excuse me. That's down from when 16 percent of our calls were COVID calls during August. Uh, some real numbers to work with here. Our one-week drop was 46% from last week to this week. Our two-week drop was 75%. And from August, that's 80% drop from August. So that's huge. 
I currently have zero personnel out with COVID, zero on quarantine, and that I know of, no family members that have COVID. And, you know, I have to thank my personnel because they've worked so hard during this, and we're not letting our guard down. We're going to continue with our precautions. And for the foreseeable future, uh, we're going to continue wearing our mask in public. But we're looking forward to the day when we can drop some of these precautions. Are there any questions from uh, the council members to Chief Reed? Uh, thank you, Chief Reed. And I, I like one of the statements that you made is that you're not going to uh, let your guard down. And I think that should go out to all the citizens, even though things are moving up for us, we shouldn't let our guards down and continue doing what we're doing until this is all eradicated so that we can go back to not necessarily a norm, but go back to a new norm because things are not going to totally be like it used to be. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam right. President. I, I just want to make a comment to the chief right quick. Uh, I yes, wanna, just want to let you know I'm, I'm praying for your department uh, Thank after you. the horrific, horrific scene yesterday. And not yes, only your department, but the police department, because uh, and you you make sure you take care of those medics and stuff that, that went in because uh, they they probably gonna need it. Okay. Yes, sir. I, if there's I, anything I, I can do, you let me know. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chief. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. We will uh, continue with our agenda for today. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the Community Development Committee uh, work session and the City Council meeting held on September the 28th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Councilwoman Tells. Here. Councilman Williams. Here. Councilman Worthy. Yes. Councilman Back. Yes. Councilman Wilson. Yes. Councilman Cannon. Yes. And Councilman Reed. Yes. Motion carries to approve minutes. All right. The chair will entertain a motion to ratify payment of accounts for the week of September the 24th through the 30th. So move. Second. Second. <clears throat> Clerk, will you take uh, will you take the vote? Councilman Reed? Yes. Councilman Cannon? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Back? Yes. Councilman Worthy? Yes. <laughs> Councilman Williams? Yes. And Councilwoman Tolls. Yes. Motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Uh, Mayor, do we have any proclamation? Proclamation, you want Hillary doing it? I, I do have one I'm doing over at the library uh, for the gentleman who uh, we're getting a proclamation okay. for. Yep. All right. We'll okay. look forward to seeing that then. All right. We'll, okay, we'll move on to unfinished business. Uh, a and B, no council action will be necessary regarding the resolution on 1427 Paradise Avenue in District 1 and 1604 Litchfield Avenue in District 2 because the grass cutting cost has been paid by the owner. We have a resolution assessing the nuisance abatement lien for grass cutting property located at 921 Tuscaloosa Avenue in District 3. And this resolution was tabled for one year on September the 29th, 2020 to allow the owners to make payment. One payment of $20 was received, making the balance $231. We'll need to a motion to substitute a resolution assessing a lien in the amount of $231. So move on the substitution of the motion. Second. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Okay, Councilwoman Tolls? Yes. 
Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilman Worthy? Yes. Councilman Back? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Cannon? Yes. And Councilman Reed? Yes. The motion carries for the substitution of the resolution. And now the chair will entertain a motion to adopt the resolution as uh, substituted. So moved. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Councilman Reed? Yes. Councilman Cannon? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Back? Yes. Councilman Worthy? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. And Councilwoman Tolls? Yes. Motion carries to adopt the substituted resolution. Item 10, uh, no council action will be necessary regarding the resolution on 20, 221 <coughs> Mary, Mary Drive in District 1. The nuisance has been abated by the owner. Item number 11, this is the time and place as advertised to conduct a public hearing allowing anyone to speak in opposition to or in favor of a resolution or an abatement of nuisance on property located at 1336 Alabama Street in District 3. It's uh, Wanda Deslin, Wanda Deslin and care of Tina M. Lewis being the last known owners. Is there a uh, Anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Is there anyone speaking in favor? Yes, Madam President, this is Brian Harvison with the Building Department. We filed this case in October of last year. It actually burned a year ago this month. There was a building permit taken out in June, but no work has been done. Hopefully you've all received the pictures that we sent uh, previously. And uh, what we're doing is asking for a resolution today for, to abate this nuisance. Thank you. What is the pleasure of the council? Move to abate. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Councilwoman Tolles? Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilman Worthy? Yes. Councilman Back? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Cannon? Yes. And Councilman Reed? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. No, no uh, item number 12, no action is necessary regarding the resolution for 942 uh, Chestnut Street in District 5. Uh, the nuisance has been abated by the owner. Our next public hearing is a resolution on an abatement of nuisance on property at 1028 uh, Fairview Avenue in District 6. And this is the estate of Glad Gladys uh, Buford and Gladys Buford in care of Carolyn Moore being the last known owners. Um, is there anyone to speak in opposition to this resolution? I believe there was a discussion during pre-council. So Mr. Harbison, uh, would you speak to this at this time? Yes, are we talking about item 12? No, item 13. Okay, item 13. Yes, uh, we actually had a conversation with the owner, uh, the individual representing the owner in this case. Uh, it, it just a, a, a regular uh, filed nuisance case involving property on Fairview. Uh, it was filed April 2020. Uh, the owner uh, who and, and their representatives are in favor of the city abating this nuisance by demolition and then have an opportunity to set up payments in the future. And uh, we certainly uh, welcome that. Uh, so we're asking for a resolution today to abate this nuisance. Thank you. Okay. What is the pleasure of the council? Move to abate. Second. 
Clerk, will you take the vote? Councilman Reed? Yes. Councilman Cannon? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Back? Yes. Councilman Worthy? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. And Councilwoman Tolls? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. Item 14 is no action will be necessary regarding this resolution for 2318 Norris Avenue in District 6. Uh, the nuisance has been abated by the owner. Uh, <clears throat> item 15 is our final public hearing is a resolution approving an issuance of an alcoholic beverage license. Uh, Latanya Rutledge doing business at 7-Eleven located at 823 Tuscaloosa Avenue in District three has applied for a restaurant retail liquor license. Is there anyone to speak in opposition to this resolution? Is there anyone speaking in favor? The chair will entertain a motion uh, to adopt this resolution. So move. Second. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Councilwoman Tolls? No. Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilman Worthy? Yes. Councilman Back? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Cannon? No. And Councilman Reed? Yes. Motion carries to adopt by 5-2 vote. Okay. Our next item is a resolution appointing members to the Forest Cemetery Board and this appoints Kyle Chamber to replace Barbara Reed for a term expiring April the 5th, 2024. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. I move. I move. Second. Any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Councilman Reed? Yes. Councilman Cannon? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Back? Yes. Councilman Worthy? Yes. Yes. I, a, I, I okay, didn't hear yeah. you. Did you call for my vote? We can't hear her. <laughs> did, did you call for my vote, Alva? She's Michael, talking, but you can't hear. We can't hear you. Here. Okay. I heard you that time. Say it again. Oh, our sound is off. Okay. I think we can we hear, hear you now, Miss Alva. Okay, I'm in there now. Okay, <laughs> okay. My my last yes for some was from Councilman Worthy. So Councilman Williams. No. And Councilwoman Tolls. Yes. Motion carries to adopt. Uh, the vote was six to one. Okay, and. Uh... Uh, item 17 is appointing a member to the Fire Cemetery Foundation, and this appoints Kyle Chamber to replace Barbara Reed for a term expiring May 28, 2024. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. So we just Any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Councilwoman Tolls? Yes. Councilman Williams? No. Councilman Worthy? Yes. Councilman Back? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Cannon? Yes. And Councilman Reed? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. The vote was six to one. Item 17 is a resolution authorizing agreement with Language Line Services and Company. 
And this is for language line, phone, and insight video interpreting and is an upgrade of services currently used by the Gaston Police Department. And there is a per minute uses fee and a one-time activation fee of $2,500. The chair will entertain a motion to uh, adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Councilman Reed? Yes. Councilman Cannon? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Back? Yes. Councilman Worthy? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. And Councilwoman Tolls? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. Okay. I have a resolution here renaming the library park at the Gaston Public Library. And I'd like to read the resolution in its entirety. Renaming the library park at the Gaston Public Library. Whereas Clarence Underwood was born in Marion, Alabama on October the 10th, 1933 and became a resident of Gaston graduating from Carver High School in 1953. He was a three sports letterman in football, baseball and track and served as captain of the football team for three years. And whereas Clarence Underwood served in the US Army 82nd Airborne Division from 1953 to 1955 and graduated from Michigan State University in 1961 receiving a bachelor and a master's degree in health and physical education and obtaining a PhD in higher education in 1982. And whereas Dr. Underwood serves as Michigan State Assistant Ticket Manager in 1969, Deputy Commissioner of the Big Ten Athletic Conference from 1982 to 1990, and Michigan State Assistant Athletic Director from 1990 until 1999. He achieved many accomplishments while serving as athletic director at Michigan State from 1999 to 2002, including the 2000 NCAA Basketball Championship and a 2000 Citric Bowl victory. And whereas Dr. Underwood received the Michigan State Distinguished Alumni Award in 2003, the Michigan State Department of Kineology Professional Achievement Award in 2013 and was inducted into the Michigan State Hall of Fame in 2017. He was also inducted into the Etiwal County Sports Hall of Fame in 2020. Now, therefore, the mayor and the city council of Gaston, Alabama, hereby resolve that the library park at the Gaston Public Library would now and forever be named as the Dr. Clarence Underwood Park recognizing and honoring the many accomplishments of this teacher, counselor, and administrator who has inspired many others to expand and advance their efforts in learning, development, and well-being. I hereby certify that this resolution was duly adopted by the City Council of the City of Gaston, Alabama at a meeting held on October the 5th, 2021 Ms. Ivan Nelson, city clerk. So at this time, the chair will entertain a motion to adopt the resolution. So moved. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Yes, ma Madam President, uh, I would just like to make a couple of, uh, of comments uh, as it relates to this. I think this is a monumental uh, event for the city of Gasden. Uh, anytime we can honor one of our own uh, who's, uh, who's gone off and done well and, uh, and, and is coming back to be recognized. Um, and I think it's very telling considering the period in, uh, <clears throat> in, in which Mr. Underwood uh, came up. Uh, in, in being in the South in the 60s uh, when there were a number of very ignorant social policies being deployed, he managed to sidestep those things and, uh, and become great in spite of it. So I'm so proud uh, and uh, much of what he has done and much of what he represents 
um, reflects in, uh, in the opportunities that have been presented to us. And uh, we're just really, really excited. I'm just really, really excited about this, uh, this designation for him. So congratulations, Mr. Underwood. Dr. Underwood is here today, and uh, I'd like to recognize the library director, Mr. Craig Scott, at this time to introduce him. Thank you, President Tolles. And uh, we have quite a group here in my office right now, and we're looking forward to everybody coming over. Uh, it's an invited list at 12 noon for our uh, lunch reception with Dr. Underwood and then the ribbon cutting and unveiling of the new park sign at one o'clock. But Dr. Underwood is sitting uh, in the chair of honor right here. And we are so proud that the uh, library is involved in the library park. And thanks to the Brotherhood of St. Andrew for coming up with the idea originally. And thanks to all of you and the mayor for supporting uh, the resolution to rename the park uh, forever after Dr. Clarence Underwood. Dr. Underwood does have a statement if, uh, if time allows. Okay. And Dr. Underwood, before you talk, I read from a paper, but I don't know if you can see, but this is the resolution that we will be giving to you later on. Thank you. All right. Dr. Underwood. Thank you very much. Honorable Mayor Sherman Guyton, members of the City Council, members of the Brotherhood of St. Andrew from the Episcopal Church of the Holy Comforter. And personally, I would like to also respect Craig Scott and Steve Taylor, who have been my vanguards in this special occasion. Also, I want to recognize a few people in the office today, my son, David, my grandson, Parker, my nephew, uh, Dexter Harrell, and their other members, and those who are listening in to the family members and friends. Naming this park in my honor. is highly challenging to my imagination. I never dreamed that this significant honor could happen to me. I am deeply touched by your generous tribute and dedication in my honor. I am grateful that you have chosen me to receive this tremendous honor while I'm still living. However, I must say that naming a park in my honor in Gaston, Alabama is much bigger than Clarence Underwood Jr. It reflects favorably on Gaston as a city up on a hill for all to see. It represents Gaston's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. It recognizes that Gaston is a city that encourages its citizens to grow and to learn and to find and use your God-given talents and gifts for your personal development, as well as to help others in need. This is a great day for me, my family members, friends, the citizens of Etowah County and people from everywhere to come and enjoy the use of this beautiful park. I know God is good. And he has patiently guided me in my path of life, including the naming of this beautiful park. Thank you today for your honor. Thank you, Dr. Underwood. We are, we are very honored to do that. And it is true what you said. We try, we work at being a city that looks after all people. Uh, uh, Dr. Madam Tolles. President. Councilman Madam Back, President. Councilman Back, Councilman William, after Thank Councilman you. Back. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to echo Councilman Williams' uh, comments, and I also wanted to offer my own. Uh, with my involvement on the Etowah County Sports Hall of Fame Board of Directors, I had the esteemed privilege and honor of talking with Dr. Underwood, oh gosh, I don't know, three or four times. Uh, and thanks to Steve Taylor and his friends for recommending him to be included in our Sports Hall of Fame. But it was the conversations I had with Dr. Underwood that have uh, probably forever changed me and touched me in a way 
that I am, uh, I'm, I count myself as one of the lucky guys that have gotten to know him. I can't wait to meet him in person uh, here shortly, but we've had some wonderful conversations. His wisdom uh, is just unsurpassed. Uh, but what struck me the most about Dr. Underwood is just his grace and humility to, to mankind. Uh, it's, it's just outstanding. Uh, he sent me a copy of his book, autographed it with a nice note. I, Dr. Underwood, I've read the book and I've gone back and read certain passages. It's a, it is a must read book and I'll recommend everybody go to the Gadsden Public Library and check that book out. Uh, you will not want to put it down. I think I read it in about two or three days. I, I found myself, literally, I couldn't put it down. It's, it has a, contains a history of Gadsden somewhat, but it also has Dr. Underwood's life story. And uh, if there was ever a Denzel Washington movie that needs to be made, it's about Dr. Underwood and, and, and his life. It's, it's just a wonderful life. And Dr. Underwood, God bless you. God bless your family. So glad that you're home in Gadsden, Alabama. Uh, and I look very forward to getting to shake your hand, give you a hug and, and meet you here shortly. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Councilman William. Thank you, Madam President. Dr. Underwood, uh, I, I just wanna make sure that we take the opportunity to, uh, to have uh, read into the record your response uh, to the following question. Were you able to beat Norris High School your senior year at Carver High School? I tell you, if I had played them, the score would have been 40 to nothing in favor of Carver High School. <laughs> <laughs> Duly noted. All right. Uh, comments from the uh, council uh, and the mayor. We'll, we'll, start with, uh, we'll start with Councilman Wilson. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I don't, I don't really have much to say other than um, I will uh, I will just say that I, I'm going to take some time off from the council. So for the next two or three meetings, I'll be out. Um, you know, my papa always told me that if nobody seems to measure up, maybe it's time to check your own yardstick. Um, so I've been feeling that way a lot right now. And I think it's time for me to maybe take some time and, and uh, clear my head a little bit and look inward and what a great way to start that process uh, with the comments from Dr. Underwood. I look forward to having an opportunity to meet you soon. Thank you. All right. Um, Councilman Reed. <clears throat> yes, I'd just like to say it's a good day for Gadsden and for Dr. Underwood. Thank you. Councilman Worthy. I just really want to give kudos to Councilman Beck because he brought uh, Dr. Underwood to my attention and to several of our attention. And thank you for really getting the ball rolling, uh, Councilman Beck. I know you don't want to take credit for anything like that, but I, I just wanted to, you know, set it. And, and thank you, Dr. Underwood, for being here. Uh, also, I, I, when I was talking to the fire chief, somebody texted me and told me to, uh, talk a little bit about what happened because people might not know, but uh, we had a, a homicide in, our, in my district yesterday and uh, it was pretty bad. So uh, that's all I'm on set. And uh, the uh, firemen and the police, uh, they did an outstanding job, but I just wanted to let them know that I'm, I'm praying for them because people don't realize when they, when they go in and see stuff like that, it affects them also. So let's lift our uh, public uh, uh, professionals up in prayer and, and just think about them. Thank you. And the family that's involved. Councilman Cannon. Yes, thank you. I'd like to uh, just say, Dr. Underwood, we appreciate all you've done here and we appreciate everything you've done and we're just uh, glad you're here with us today. That's all I have today. Thank you. Councilman William, did you want to uh, I'll go? Thank you, Madam President. I, I don't have much other than to just take one last opportunity to say to Dr. Underwood, you, you make us proud. Thank you so much for your body of work. Thank you. All right. Mayor, are you on? Would you like Madam to say anything? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I, 
I didn't know if you had skipped me or if you just didn't want to hear me talk again. <laughs> no, I'm, I was going to the mayor. I'm going around. He's okay. not on yet, so go ahead, Councilman Back, and then I'll see if the mayor <laughs> wants to have anything to say. He may be waiting until he goes to the library. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you, Councilman Worthy, for your kind comments. It, it indeed has been an honor to be a part of anything that Dr. Clarence Underwood uh, does and undertakes, and uh, I, I just want to thank him again. And uh, also want to mention uh, the rainbow, uh, the beautiful wait a minute, the beautiful Rainbow Cafe is having a fundraiser this Saturday. Uh, it's at the amphitheater. It's called This Magic Moment Concert. Y'all, this is going to be something really special. Dr. Underwood, you may want to stay, okay? Wait till okay. you hear this. <laughs> this it, it features the voices of classic soul. It's, it's kind of a Motown convention. Uh, the former lead singers of The Temptations, The Drifters, The Platters, and The Four Tops We'll be singing at the Gazin Amphitheater this Saturday at uh, at eight o'clock. Gates open at seven. Uh, tickets are available at Rainbow Cafe. You can go online and find them you, on their Facebook page. You can purchase some there. You can purchase at, at the door. Uh, it's just going to be a great evening. Uh, those are some really great groups. The Temptations, the Drifters, the Platters, and the Four Tops. It's going to be that kind of a Motown night here in Gadsden. So just want to remind everybody of the great work the, at the Cafe does there at our Gadsden Public Library. It is really a, a, a shining light for our school system and, and for our city. And my uh, hats off to Chip Rowan and, and the other uh, Dr. Maness and folks at uh, Tammy McDuffie, people at the Gadsden City School System that have helped to make this a reality and a statewide and really a, a regional uh, program that everybody wants to emulate and, and copy. And then on a note, uh, it's kind of a somber note, one of my Lifelong friends, uh, Jim Stivender, passed away yesterday. Jim Stivender was 96 years old, uh, was a former city judge for the city of Gadsden, was a longtime attorney in one of the oldest law firms here in Gadsden, just a, a prince of a man. Uh, you know, he uh, at 18 years old, found himself in the belly of a B-17 fortress out of England. He flew 35 missions over Germany just like many uh, young boys, men and women did back in the early 1940s, uh, answered the call to serve our country. Um, he was the deacon at my church at First Baptist Church Gadsden. He was a longtime uh, football referee. Uh, he was just a just the consummate gentleman. Anybody that knew Jim Stivender, I think, would nod their head in agreement. So just wanted to offer that uh, condolences to his family, uh, to his wife, Stella, and his boys, uh, John and Paul. And uh, we'll be remembering them in prayer th throughout the coming days. Thank you, Madam President. Right. <clears throat> in our excitement of renaming the park <clears throat> and Dr. Underwood, uh, we did not uh, vote on the resolution. So at this time, uh, I would uh, uh, ask for uh, a motion to the renaming of the park. We were going to let Dr. Underwood leave here and then the park wouldn't even be named after him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so do I have a motion? So, so moved. Move. Second. Second. Uh, clerk, will you take the vote? <clears throat> Councilwoman Toll? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilman Worthy? Yes. Councilman Back? Yes. Councilman Wilson, he may have, um, he may not be with us still. Uh, Councilman Cannon, yes, and Councilman Reed, yes. Motion carries to adopt. Uh, I have one announcement, and I'm sure everybody, uh, uh, the one, is looking forward to this. On October the 19th, there will be a drawing, a drawing of four of those who have been vaccinated, October the 19th, and the drawing will take place during uh, the city council meeting, during the city council meeting. So October the 19th will be the four drawings, four drawings um, that would take place during the council meeting. So if there's nothing else, 
Then I call for a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. All right. We are adjourned.